You shut them down with the word of God. You shut them down. They have no place in your life. You shut them down. In the word it says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. And this world today is a rebellious place. It doesn't want to acknowledge that good is good, but rather evil is good. And it says in Isaiah, woe to those that call evil good and good evil. We live in that day and age. This world has become a place that doesn't want to tolerate the words of Jesus. They want to tolerate their message, their good news, which is not exactly good news when you see what they've done to the place. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 2, it says, And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me, and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impotent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, they are a rebellious house. Yet they will know that a prophet had been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though their briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words, nor dismayed by their looks. Though they are a rebellious house, you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Verse 7 of Ezekiel is talking about declaring the word of the Lord, speaking the word that he wants Ezekiel to speak to this rebellious house of Israel. They don't want the word. But God told Ezekiel, you shall declare my word to them, and you will make them listen. Because if you don't, you are going to be accountable. And for us today, as Christians, believers, we need to be declaring the word of the Lord more. Salvation is for everyone, Jew and Gentile, and everyone has an opportunity to hear the gospel and to be saved from the good news of Jesus Christ. So why is it hard for us today as Christians to simply preach the gospel to even the average Joe on the street that we may know? Embarrassment, maybe? Embarrassment or you don't have time? What is your excuse? What is my excuse? What are all of our excuses? Our excuses are nothing, but we should be in obedience to what God wants us to do and obviously he commanded us all to go unto all the world and preach the gospel to every nation everyone so we are held accountable because we haven't enough been spreading the good news oh there are tremendous people right now today that are doing a fine job of it but this world is still lost there are billions upon billions of unsaved people that still need Jesus. The harvest is coming, and I hope the crop of wheat is far larger than the crop of weeds mixed in with it. Jesus said they would hate you because of me. Because of me, they would hate you. So we're already Christians, we're already saved, and they already hate us, so we might as well try to bring them into the fold, right? We need to do everything we can to bring in souls into the kingdom of God because hell is real. The lake of fire is real, and we have to be in urgency trying to win the people around us, especially, to Jesus. And if we can, if we can establish at least building people around us to Jesus, then yes, we can spread out into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. 
spread it in every which way we can and know how. But start at home first. Start with your loved ones. Move on to your friends. Move on to the people down the street, whoever. But in any way you can, start spreading out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go out into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes, we need to do that. And we are, to an extent, doing that. But don't forget home first. Don't forget your brothers. Don't forget your sisters. Don't forget your mother, your father. Don't forget your grandfather, your grandmother, your grandson, your granddaughter, cousins, aunts, uncles. Don't forget them. Hell is real. And you've got to make them see that. Hell is real. Hell is eternal. Verse 6 of Ezekiel says that we are not to be afraid of their words. In the scriptures it says, What could mortal man do unto me? What could mortal man do to you compared to the eternal lake of fire? A boldness for Christ is what we need in our hearts. So get bold. Be bold. Be strong. And don't be afraid. Tell someone the gospel. Because tick tock, tick tock, the time is ticking away. And whether they hear, whether they refuse, it won't be on you, but in all urgency, make sure they understand what decision they are making. Now over in chapter 3 of Ezekiel, verse, starting in verse 16, it says, Now it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear a word from my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, You shall surely die, and you give them no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from the, his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity and lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the plain, and there I shall talk with you. So I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there like the glory which I saw by the river Kibar. And I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go shut yourself inside your house, and you son of man. Surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them, so that you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, He who hears, let him hear. And he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. No matter what, we need to make sure the world and everyone around us hears the gospel. They must have an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If we don't do that, it's on us. Now, what could man do to you compared to what's eternal? Are we so afraid of their judgment that we don't think we can face their words, because their judgment is nothing compared to what's coming on the judgment day. They won't be the one judging. God is the one judging in the end. Whether they hear or whether they refuse, let's get the gospel out to them. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Walk in victory. Declare the word of God in victory. This is the word that I give to you, my brothers and sisters. Walk in victory. Declare victory. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord.